All hope for AMD's GPUs is not lost, thankfully. There will be some available on December 13th. And also, the cheap CPUs from AMD, they're getting even cheaper, all right? And Elon rolling out all the full self-driving to run you over. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. Happy Black Friday to everybody who's gonna be spending a whole lot of their capitalism today. I really appreciate that. And maybe AMD would appreciate you saving a little bit of that dosh in order to spread it around on their GPUs coming December 13th. And we've gotten new reports coming out of some select retailers indicating that while the report that AMD is going to be launching their reference cards on December 13th and the AIB partner cards will be coming at a later date that is applying to most of them, but not all of them. And it turns out that there will be at least two manufacturers who will have AIB partner cards for the 7900 XT and XTX available December 13th, according to Computer Base, which is a retailer over in Germany. So this does bode well to not just having to buy reference and potentially having a little bit more stock. But according to the reports, it does seem like the reason this is happening is not because of drivers and not necessarily because of stock issues, but because of timing. AMD didn't not give AIB partners enough time to develop their custom versions of these GPUs. And especially with a lot of these companies also having to develop GPU coolers and how they do everything for NVIDIA's GPUs at the same time, it likely put them in a time crunch, which made it so that only AMD reference cards are gonna be the primary GPU launch that's taking place on the 13th. So not entirely great news. It's not going to be the brand new boys that we're expecting, but it does appear like we are gonna be getting a lot of custom versions. In fact, according to EEC filings, it seems like there might be as many as eight different ROG Strix versions between the 7900 XT and XTX. So it does look like there potentially might be some variety, especially considering that AMD is bringing a new way of doing clocks with a stream processor clock and one for everything else and making it so that there could be a lot of tweaking that's going on in the back end for all these different custom GPUs. And especially once you throw in a third eight pin power connector, According to reports, we might even be able to get these things up to three gigahertz. It might actually be wicked fast that, uh, that these GPUs might be coming out as. And whether or not that's worth waiting for, maybe third-party cards will be significantly better than what AMD has to offer. Let's say it's a 10% it's a uplift because of overclocking. You picking up, you waiting for, for the third party, or are you buying reference? Honestly, there would be no way of validating that because like reviewers likely wouldn't have the third party cards in their hands before the reference ones actually ship. So it'd be, this is a recursive thought. Actually, I don't even know if it folds in on itself, but I'm folding in on my own brain asking it. So just deal with the question I labeled for you. I handed it to you on a label maker. You know, it makes a lot more sense than I do. Today's video sponsor. My friends, today's video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. You might remember a video we did recently where we upgraded Kyler's gaming setup. And in that video, we gave him a brand new FlexiSpot E5 Classic 78 by 30 inch three-stage dual motor electric standing desk in bamboo top. Not only is this desk wide enough to accommodate everything that Kyler has for his gaming setup, but it also makes sure that he is not just sitting on his butt the entire time, but instead can also use it as a standing desk, even in the small little attic that he has for gaming. And because it has programmable memory buttons, you can make sure that he doesn't raise it too high because in that video where we did the setup, we hit our head on the ceilings no less than 36 times. So making sure that there's a pre-configured height is definitely going to be the way to make sure that his monitors don't even hit the ceiling. It's not even a concern. And the dual motors on the desk are whisper quiet. They generate less than 45 decibels of noise and capable of handling 65% more weight up to 220 pounds on top versus a single motor desk. And they have the five-year FlexiSpot warranty on the standing desk frame and motors, as well as a two-year warranty on the control panel and electronic components. And it has great accessories like this cable basket that goes underneath to make sure that all of Kyler's wires and everything are actually properly cable managed. Kyler's been using this desk nonstop since he's got it because it's just so versatile, allows him to get standing or sitting depending on what his gaming needs are, and it does so very conveniently. And currently, FlexiSpot has their Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales going on right now where you can get up to 50% off their products. So check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. That's right, get yourself a new 
desk like Kyler got a new desk. And in case you're looking at picking up a processor, the Ryzen 9 7950X has gotten even cheaper. It's been spotted on different retailers at $550, which is cheaper than the price that AMD had it at on their own website. This makes it as expensive as the 7900X's launch, but you get 16 cores, which is absolutely absurd. If you go over to Newegg's website, using our affiliate link in the video description, you will see it's 574, but you do get a $20 off promo code, at least as of the time of filming, to make it 554, which is very close to the price we just talked about. And if you head on over to Amazon, what you'll see is that it's kind of sold out, so it's at $660, but if you scroll on down over here, you go to being sold by Amazon, it's still $550. It is simply the fact that it's only gonna get delivered December 11th through the 12th, so you will have to wait a little bit for it, but you're saving a significant amount of money on this. If you wanna pick one up, you can use our affiliate link that's in the video description. We'd really appreciate it. And I know you would appreciate more crypto stocks. Bitcoin, not doing much on Thanksgiving. It's it's actually nearly flat at 16,541. Ethereum up a little bit at 1.42% gain to be at 11.97, and Dogecoin up not a whole lot either to be at 8.1 cents. But Reese is up and ready to bring you the Black Friday deals. Okay, we tried to collect the hottest tech deals out there. Sit, listen, click the links, help keep the lights on in South Africa with the stage five load shedding. Black Friday, welcome back to UFT Deals. We bring you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. That actually hurt my throat a little bit, dang. Hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys have been waiting all week. We've got a ton of deals to get through today. This actually might be a UFD deals record, so let's go. First up, we have the Samsung 980 Pro SSD with the heatsink. This two terabyte drive is currently going for $189.99, which is $210 or 53% off. And then we have the Superflower Platinum SE, a 1200 watt 80 plus platinum power supply going for $189.99, which is $160 or 45% off. Then there's the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, an eight core 16 thread CPU currently going for $229, which is $220 off or 49% off. And the perfect pair up for this is the Gigabyte X570 Aero G. This AM4 ATX motherboard is currently going for $199.99, which is $150 or 42% off. But if you're still kicking it on 10th or 11th gen Intel, then this Gigabyte Z590 Aorus Master is currently going for only $129.99, which is $280 off or 68% off. Gigabyte's coming in with the deals today. But on the peripheral front, we have the Orki True Wireless Earbuds going for only $9.99, which is a whole $40 off. But we also have the Cooler Master CK721, which is probably one of my favorite pre-made mechanical keyboards. You can pick this up in silver or black with mechanical brown or blue switches. And it's currently going for only $54.99 with the promo code, which is $65 off. Then another classic, the Razer Death Adder V2 Pro Wireless Gaming Mouse. It's currently going for only $57.99, which is $72 off or 55% off. But if you're looking for more of an all-in-one solution than this Asus ZenBook Pro, with its 15.6 inch OLED touch display, a Ryzen 7 5800H, a GeForce RTX 3050 Ti, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. This is currently going for $799.99, which is $600 or 42% off. But another thing with a nice display is this Aorus Fi32 QX, which is a 32 inch 1440p 240 hertz display that can overclock to 270 hertz. Currently going for $489.99, which is $510 or 51% off. But if Black Friday is that time of year for you where you just go absolutely all out, then you can't do much better than the Samsung QN95B, their 85 inch Neo QLED 4K Smart TV currently going for $3,499.99, which is $2,000 off. Go big or go home. Last but not least, we have the Sony A7R 3 full frame interchangeable lens, 42.4 megapixel mirrorless camera body going for only $1,999. 99, which is a whole heckin' $800 off. And don't forget, we'll be updating the website as the deals roll out during the day, so be sure to check the link for these and more in the video description. And with that, I hope you guys have joined me for Cyber Monday, but until then, enjoy the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Reese would have a hard time charging a Tesla because he doesn't have a whole lot of electricity, and Tesla doesn't allow you to charge your house with vehicle to load, so that, that kind of goes out the window. You'd have a much better time with like a lightning, but now you're gonna have a better time in case you paid for the full self-driving on Tesla's vehicles. It has officially rolled out into open beta where anybody who wants to request the beta can actually do that according to Elon Musk on Twitter, saying that this is a major milestone for the Tesla Autopilot AI team to deliver a not complete bit of software that actually doesn't work well on anything that's not a road that it's actually encountered before and that works really terribly 
actually here in Pittsburgh and is actually nearly unusable and I actually don't like using it. And according to Electrek, which is actually pretty pro Tesla most of the time, says that I wouldn't call that a major milestone considering the goal it's replacing. It used to be 1 million robo taxis by the end of the year. Then it was 1 million people with FSD beta by the end of the year. And now it's just everyone who paid up to 15 grand for the full self-driving package gets access to a beta version of the program that doesn't deliver on the promised performance. That's essentially where I stand on it. It doesn't seem to work that well. Opening up to anybody who just wants to try it out will likely increase the amount of accidents that are happening. Hopefully it doesn't increase any fatalities because they're going slow enough that it won't happen. But it, I, it's not ready. It's, it's just not, it's not good. But if you paid 15 grand, you probably want to try it out anyways. And I really want to spend the money to try out these monitors, LG and MSI announcing ultra wide and super ultra wide OLED 240 Hertz panels. This is on top of the 27 inch, just regular monitor that LG announced recently. You can see here their ultra gear OLED, the curved display. I absolutely want this. This is going to cost a freaking pretty penny considering the 27 inch costs $9.99. It's going to be absolutely absurd at seven. $1,700 and it's going to be available for pre-order on the 12th of December with them shipping on the 28th and then MSI showing off their super ultra wide OLED which oh it's going to look immaculate it's the world's first super ultra wide QD OLED curve gaming monitor MSI not confirming the release date the price point or the resolution on this bad boy if I had to guess likely 5120 by 1440 that would be my speculation uh but I want it's them I'm not spending $1,700 on the, the LG one. I'm not spending $1,000 on the 27 inch one. But if you wanna get me a Christmas present, that's something I won't buy for myself. I'm just gonna say that. And something that you likely won't do to yourself is install malware intentionally, more or less. I'm sure there's a few of you out there who just like experimenting. Anyways, MSI Afterburner is being opened up to being malware again via forums and just phishing attacks and making it so that you download a version of what you think is going to help you overclock or at least monitor the temperatures on your PC. And in fact, has been a phishing scheme, password monitor, crypto miner, and is back at it. So just be very careful with your MSI downloads there are fake sites such as the ones that are listed on the screen right now. Don't go to them. Don't try them out. Just, just get it from official MSI website. Verify where you're downloading things from, friends. And AMD wants you to verify the longevity of your platform, okay? You, you're buying Intel? Pathetic. Stop it, okay? Because our platform is going to be long. They put out a blog post talking about how they are inherently better as a choice for the motherboard over what Intel's providing. It's essentially talking about the fact that the LG 1700 platform is not going to have a whole lot of future proofability and showing things like AIM4 was working in 2016, going all the way up to 2021. And this is absolutely great for gamers everywhere. And AIM5 is expected to have even more longevity and even more future looking DDR5 memory compatibility as well as the fact that it has better PCI Express 5.0 capacity because when you put in an SSD on Intel's platform it halves the PCI Express 5.0 lanes whereas on AMD you get the full thing and it just makes it so much better more PCI Express 5.0 lanes that's better overall there's only a few things that I kind of want to caveat here which I think is a conversation that needs to be more readily had by PC gamers everywhere number one this is not one we need to have a conversation about PCI Express 5.0 5.0 doesn't really matter right now. AMD is not releasing it on their next gen GPUs. Nvidia is not doing it. It's an irrelevant technology at the current moment. It's great that we have it. I would love more PCI Express lanes, but basing your sales pitch on something nobody is using, not a great look in my eyes. That's not really a big deal. Number two, the problem that I have with this is especially after talking with a lot of motherboard manufacturers behind the scenes, the idea that AIM4 provided a lot of longevity for the vast majority of gamers is simply not how gamers operate. They tend to hold on to their platforms long enough to go on to the next one. It's a five year upgrade cycle. So AIM4 launching in 2017, people are looking to upgrade now to an entirely new platform. And just because Intel last a little longer, they're keeping their boards just as long as they are on AM4 with Ryzen. It doesn't actually fundamentally change the upgrade for most people. It is nice to have that option. I do agree with that, but it's not necessarily something that the vast majority of consumers are doing. This is also something that I've seen in the comments recently of Reese bringing you UFD deals on NVIDIA GPUs. There was a GTX 1650 deal recently. Somebody was like, why would you do that? 
there's RX 6600 deals that are much better. And it's like, okay, cool, we can add those in. But at the same time, the reports just came out. NVIDIA has 88% of the discrete GPU market share. Most people don't care to buy AMD. It's just not happening. So the conversations that we have as enthusiasts are not conversations that matter on a broad spectrum, all play type setup. Also, I forgot there was one more thing AMD added in here where they talked about some Intel platforms are also limited to DDR4, which can limit game performance. These limitations mean that the newest Intel platforms are not an investment, but are more of a liability as time goes on. No, that's it's the you can't have both arguments of platform longevity of being like, hey, look at our AIM4. You can put a 5800X 3D in it. And then Intel being like, hey, you know that DDR4 that you bought? You can put it in this brand new motherboard. It's the same argument. There's longevity in the parts that you buy. AMD's arguing that's for the motherboard. Intel saying, hey, you don't have to upgrade the entire thing. That is the same thing. And you're just being very pedantic at this point. Intel didn't limit their platform to DDR4. They gave consumers a choice, which is good. OK, AMD, don't don't do that. OK, it's great that you segmented the whole thing. AIM5 supports DDR5 and no DDR4. I respect that for a longevity standpoint, but you can't you cannot crap on Intel for keeping DDR4 because that was good for the same reasons you're saying AIM4 are good. But it's all good. We're all eating well. Buy the 7950X at $550 using our affiliate link down below. It's PC gamers having a great time. Enjoy your things while you have them. And I'll see you tomorrow, Monday. I'll see you on Monday for hot news.